One of the concerns in pediatric intraocular lens implantation surgery has been the high incidence of postoperative opacification of the posterior capsule and retrosudophagic membrane formation. Epithelial cells transform to fibroblasts and alchnic pearls and proliferate using the posterior capsule and anterior vitreous face as a scaffold. The transition between a clear surface and a cloudy one may occur quite quickly, resulting in poor vision and amblyopia. Secondary membranes are commonly formed, which cloud the visual axis and can lead to irreversible deprivation amblyopia. Studies have found that even after primary posterior capsulotomy, over 60% of the children develop secondary membranes which required additional surgical procedures. A disadvantage of primary capsulotomy with anterior vitrectomy is the possibility of IOL dislocation, vitreous incarceration in the wound, and vitreous adhesions, which increase the risk of CME and retinal detachment. Even after primary posterior capsulectomy with vitrectomy, many children's visual axes still become reoccluded by secondary membranes, necessitating repeated capsulotomies and sometimes pars plana membranectomy. Dr. Tobias Noyhan has demonstrated a technique that he termed rexus fixation. This technique involves placing the IOL in the sulcus and pushing the optics through the capsular rexus opening into the capsular bag. I've utilized the rexus fixation principle after primary posterior capsular rexus in children. This technique, that I call posterior capsular rexus with optic capture, involves pushing the optic through a posterior continuous curvilinear opening while the haptic remains in the capsular bag. It is theorized that this posterior capsular rexus technique will reduce secondary cataract formation while potentially eliminating the need for an anterior vitrectomy. Posterior capsular rexus with optic capture involves a continuous curvilinear capsular rexus of both the anterior and posterior capsules and a vaulting of the optic through the posterior capsular rexus. I have used this technique in over 10 pediatric cases since April 1993 with promising results in the short-term follow-up since its development. The continuous curvilinear capsular rexus of the anterior capsule is initiated with a cystotome and continued with the capsular rexus forceps. The leading edge of the capsular rexus should be directed to create an opening smaller than desired because the elasticity of the child's lens capsule can often create a capsular opening larger than expected. During capsular rexus, the internal pressure and anterior chamber depth is maintained by injecting a highly viscous viscoelastic agent such as Helon GV. Once the cataract has been removed, IOL implantation is done under the viscoelastic through a wound that is extended to the diameter of the optic chosen, which is usually between five and six millimeters in diameter. IOLs with optic diameters larger than six millimeters should be avoided when performing optic capture because larger diameter optics would require too large of a posterior capsular rexus opening. Once the IOL is well positioned in the capsular bag, a posterior continuous curvilinear capsular rexus is initiated with a bent 27 gauge needle. In such a manner, a small central puncture in the posterior capsule is created. Additional viscoelastic is placed through the central puncture of the posterior capsule to push the vitreous face away. Next, a circular tear is accomplished by using CCC principles and strategies. The tear is directed radially before being turned and continued counterclockwise for 360 degrees. High magnification and liberal use of viscoelastic agents aid in performing this maneuver. Proper head positioning is essential to maintain a clear red reflex. Frequent regrasps of the leading edge of the posterior capsular tear are useful to prevent an equatorial extension of the progressing tear. The end result should be a well-centered posterior capsular rexus 
concentric to and smaller than the optic of the IOL. A slight eccentricity of the posterior capsular rexus does not seem to affect the final positioning of the intraocular lens implant because the loops in the bag have more effect on the position of the lens than does the posterior capsular rexus with optic capture. Prior to removing the posterior capsule fragment, the surgeon should use scissors to cut through the viscoelastic to cut any possible vitreous strands which may be adherent to the fragment. A smooth CCC in the posterior capsule is resistant to radial tears and in the event an anterior vitrectomy is needed, provides a safer means of maintaining the integrity of the capsular bag. Posterior capture of the IOL optic is performed after suturing of the scleral wound but before the viscoelastic is removed. Using a blunt cannula or a spatula, first one side and then the other of the IOL optic is slipped through the posterior capsular rexus opening. The vaulting and ultimate capture of the IOL optic requires cautious manipulation because the posterior capsule is thin and may not have the same resistance to tearing as does the anterior CCC. Viscoelastic material behind the IOL is left in place, while that which remains in the anterior chamber is slowly and carefully removed at the end of the procedure. In this case, the PCCC is slightly smaller than the ideal, making it more difficult to vault the optic through the opening. Once capture of the optic is achieved, instantaneous stabilization and a fixed centration of the IOL optic will occur. The anterior capsular rexus opening will remain circular in configuration while the posterior capsular rexus opening takes on an oval shape due to the haptics remaining in the bag. Computer animation gives another view of the technique of posterior capsular rexus with optic capture. It is a technically challenging procedure that should not be performed unless the surgeon is familiar and proficient with capsular rexus techniques. After the initial puncture, viscoelastic is placed through the small opening to push the vitreous face away from the capsule. With this viscoelastic cushion, the vitreous face is protected as the IOL is nudged through the PCCC. The final result is a stable and central IOL with apposition of the anterior and posterior capsule leaflets anterior to the IOL. Fusion of the leaflets should occur 360 degrees except at the haptic-optic junctions with the resulting sealing of the bag. Residual epithelial cells should either form a somering ring or be released into the aqueous anterior to the IOL. Any adhesion of protein on the anterior surface of the IOL may be cleared away with the YAG laser. The five-month post-operative examination of the surgical case previously displayed provides evidence that the visual axis has remained clear without secondary membrane formation. There are, however, a few pearls on the anterior lens surface. This procedure was performed on a four-year-old boy with cataract secondary to radiation treatment for bilateral retinoblastoma. When performed properly, posterior capsular rexus with optic capture offers a potential method to maintain a clear visual axis while achieving excellent IOL centration. Also, the need for an anterior vitrectomy may be avoided. Pediatric cataract surgery is technically challenging. With advances in technology and new surgical techniques, many surgeons are realizing the benefits of the posterior capsular rexus. Combined with an optic capture, this technique may prove to be a clear solution to many of the problems faced in earlier pediatric cataract surgery.